Hurricanes, earthquakes, forest fires and floods. If we can predict natural disasters, we can prevent serious loss of life. And so the inventors at Google have been working on an alert system that's doing exactly that for floods. It's one of the largest scale examples of how AI can be used for social good. <laughs> Flood forecasting was a very exploratory project. The big question was, can we use technology to help out on this dire problem? Starting with the basic needs for getting information about what's going on, where is it happening, what should they be doing? One of the most important variables during a crisis is reliable information. There's so much work that's already been done by governments, and we're trying to learn from that work and assist them with their goals. In India, where we're running our first pilot program, the government has thousands of people who are measuring the water level, which allows them to know whether the river will overflow and flood, but it doesn't yet allow them to understand exactly what areas are going to be affected. Advancement in technology would help us better in spreading this message faster. To be able to provide a forecast in real time, we rely on the government we're working with. We start by collecting thousands of satellite images to build a digital model of the terrain. Based on these maps, we generate hundreds of thousands of simulations of how the river could possibly behave. We can then send those forecasts to individuals using search, maps, and Android notifications. I can't imagine a greater privilege than to do what we love, which is develop technology, and do it in a way that could actually help people directly in a very profound way. Well, I'm thrilled to welcome Sela Nevo, the project lead for Google's flood forecasting initiative, who we just saw in that film. Sela, welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. So, what inspired you and Google to start this project? Yeah, I think the thing that most drew us to this project is just the uh, unbelievable impact of floods. Uh, every year, floods uh, affect hundreds of millions of people and can cause between thousands and tens of thousands of fatalities. And it's hard to grasp the size of these numbers, but just to give an example, uh, a few years ago, we visited the Nahua village in Bihar, India, just a couple of days before severe floods with no warning uh, destroyed all houses there except a handful. Uh, and we had the privilege of meeting uh, Rakesh, who is uh, a young guy there who was one of the only people who knew how to swim in the village. Um, and he spent hours swimming through raging flood waters trying to uh, save families um, uh, from, from the floods. And you know, it's, it's examples like these, uh, which unfortunately are not uncommon, that really emphasize just how important it is to do something. One additional aspect is just how much there is to do. Uh, so flood forecasting systems uh, can prevent between 30 and 50% of both fatalities and economic harms. And Google can help in the alert distribution phase, in the modeling phase, and a lot of different components. And just in the past year, we've sent more than 100 million notifications to people who were facing floods. So I know you've got a lot to do, but what does the future hold for this technology? Yeah, there's a lot more we want to do to help. Uh, our top priority is really uh, getting these alerts to more people. Our operational flood forecasting systems currently uh, cover about 360 million people across India and Bangladesh, but there are billions more who could use this information. So that's kind of our number one priority. A second thing we really want to work on is extending the lead time of our alerts. We currently notify people uh, up to two days before flooding reaches them. Uh, and we'd really want to extend that up to about five days, which would be even more helpful for governments and NGOs trying to do more complex preparations for, for upcoming floods. So what are the biggest challenges you and your team are facing right now? Yeah, so there's a lot of challenges in this work. Um, one of our biggest challenges is reaching people who don't have access to uh, the internet. So if someone's connected to the internet, we have a lot of ways of reaching them as Google, uh, whether that's search, maps, or Android notifications. But for those who don't, uh, and many people who are the most vulnerable to flooding, 
uh, don't have access to the internet or smartphones or kind of high technology. Uh, for those, we really need the help of others. Uh, so for example, one of the things we're doing is collaborating with local NGOs and the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies to do what's called community-based alerting. We send our notifications to them and they have volunteers on the ground that use their own local networks to make sure that everyone who needs this information is able to access it. So can you apply this forecasting to volcanoes? Yeah, that's a great question. So we're, we're uh, slowly expanding to more and more types of, uh, uh, of disasters. And we'll have some uh, exciting news, not necessarily on volcanic eruptions, but on other disaster types uh, soon. I think it'll be a while until we reach volcanoes. Uh, but indeed, uh, there's no, no lack of uh, things uh, we're hoping to help with. Will this forecast service be implemented within, for instance, Google Maps or Google Search? And if so, how can I get it or sign up for it? Yeah, but that's a great question as well. Uh, so first of all, this already exists within Google Search and Google Maps. So currently, if there's a flooding event uh, uh, near you in a place where we do cover, uh, you will see this just by searching for floods if you're in the area or floods in the name of the affected area, even if you're searching from far away. And you can see this both on Maps and in Google Search. You don't need to sign up to anything, and I think that's part of the benefit, mm -hmm. right? Many of us don't think about floods or other disasters until we're directly affected. Uh, so I think part of the benefit here is indeed we want to be able to reach people proactively uh, when they need it, even if they haven't prepared in advance. So I have another question for you, slightly different. What made you want to become an inventor? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I think that for me, the uh, real goal is having real world impact. So there are just so many things that people across the world uh, have, to, have to deal with. Uh, just recently, we had the COP26 uh, conference uh, where we discussed a lot of the effects of climate affecting you know, billions of people across the planet. Uh, and so for me, the goal was to try and see how can I help as many of those people in a significant way. And I think that uh, developing innovative technology is just such a scalable and uh, uh, an effective way of really uh, trying to, to help enormous amounts of people in meaningful ways. So I think that's what kind of brought me to this path. Thank you so much for talking with us and for sharing your work that's clearly making so much of a difference. Thank you very much.